1 Corinthians by the Apostle Paul. Chapter 1, verse 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to become an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am writing to God's church in Corinth, to you who have been called by God to be his holy people. Thank you for joining me in reading the Bible in 66 days. We've begun reading through the letters of the Apostle Paul. Remember, the New Testament is made up of history, which is his story. That's the Gospels, the life of Christ, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ through his resurrection and ascension. And then his story continues with the birth of the church in the book of Acts. And now we come to the letters written by Paul, James, Peter, and John. So many of these letters was written by Paul. Remember, these letters were written to churches in Turkey and in Greece and even in Italy. The birth of the church happened in Israel on the day of Pentecost as recorded in the book of Acts. And with the birth of the church came a compassion of the Holy Spirit to go into all the world. Paul would go with Barnabas to Galatia called Turkey today. He would cross the Aegean Sea and begin to plant churches in Greece. And at the southern end of the tip of Greece is this beautiful country, the city of Corinth. And Paul the Apostle is writing this letter to the church in Corinth. I want to draw your attention as I take a break on my morning prayer walk to share with you what I've been meditating and praying about. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul wrote, Brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I could not speak to you as though you were spiritual people. What an odd thing to say. I couldn't talk to you. I couldn't teach you. I couldn't speak to you as though you were spiritual people. What in the world did Paul mean when he traveled all the way from Jerusalem and Antioch through Galatia, Turkey, all the way to Greece to come to Corinth to say, I can't speak to you as spiritually mature saints of God. Well, he explains that right here in chapter 3, verse 1. Instead, I had to talk to you as though you belonged to this world, as though you were baby Christians. This is the passage of Scripture that Watchman Nee me made so very famous from the King James language. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth in Greece that they were carnal Christians. There's no question that they were saved, that they knew Jesus as their personal Savior. But when it came to Christ being the shepherd of their life where they would listen to him and follow him, when it came to Jesus being the Messiah and the King of Kings in their lives where they would honor him and they would in following him acknowledge him in all their ways by serving the king of kings. No, instead they got up, caught up in the things of this world. Paul calls them carnal Christians. In the modern translations like the New Living Translation, even the New, Inter New International Version or the New American Standard, their Bible, instead of carnal Christians, they're called baby Christians or infants or worldly. Have you ever heard somebody say that person is living a worldly life? Well, what it means is instead of being focused on the things of God, they're in conflict with their own flesh, their own carnal nature. Paul would go on in the chapter we're looking at, chapter 3, and he would write this, friends, don't you realize that when you all come together, you are the temple of God and that the Holy Spirit 
dwells within you. Oh, not to be a carnal Christian, not to be caught up in the things of this world or the flesh, but to walk in the Spirit. Remember, as we study the history of Christ and the history of the church, and then we come to the letters, we recognize that Paul is addressing issues of the early church. He's dealing with teaching people to become mature saints of God. And in his teaching, he underscores throughout all of his letters the importance of being spirit-filled, of being spirit-focused in being one that literally is led, guided, and walking by his spirit. During the pandemic, a terrible thing happened to the body of Christ. There are many people that have stopped attending fellowship or churches. I was just reading yesterday in one research report for Christian leaders that from New York to Florida, from Seattle, Washington to LA, California, about 20% of all Christians have abandoned coming together for a solemn assembly. They've stopped participating in public worship and coming together as the body of Christ. Paul warns against that repeatedly. And here he underscores that if we're going to be strong in our faith, strong in the Spirit, and walk in the Spirit, iron sharpens iron, encouraging one another. And here he says that when we assemble, we become the temple of God and that God's Spirit lives within us. Oh, I am so grateful you've made that resolution for the year 2022 to read the Word of God each and every day. I want to thank you for being up early and joining me on my prayer walk. And I just stopped to get a little warm and maybe a cup of coffee and I'm going to go back outside where it's dark and cold. And I'm going to continue to pray through the book of 1 Corinthians. You be blessed today as you walk in the Word of God. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you sent the Spirit of God for us, that when you ascended to be with the Father, that the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, descended from on high and filled us with power and fire, your Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, not to be caught up in the things of this world, but to walk in your Spirit to come together as the family of faith, the body of Christ, the, bi the bride of Christ. Oh, how we rejoice today in your blessing. We receive your word to our heart today as we continue our season this morning of prayer, as we continue to walk and reflect upon your word. Bless the family of faith this morning their day and every challenge they faced, faced. Oh, Father God, we rejoice in your grace. In Jesus' name, you be safe today. And remember, God has already blessed you because you have been praying and seeking his face. God bless.